Recently, the WFTDA Rules Committee put out a Q&A document, which you can find at WFTDA.com rules, that clarified how Jammer lap points should and should not be awarded. Technically, as a Q&A document, the Rules Committee is saying that this is not a modification of the rules, but merely a way to help clarify how they were written. Further, I've been told this is how we as referees should have been calling it for years although I can tell you it certainly hasn't been the case, at least not consistently. And if it hasn't been done consistently, then it's probably a good idea for the Q&A. However, if you haven't been calling it this way already, this can take a bit to wrap your head around. And I admit I'm one of them, so I thought this presentation might be helpful for others, as visual aids might come in handy. This presentation is going to be a little bit different from the others in that it's going to be a lot shorter than the others and a lot more focused on just this one issue. No real background or secondary issues. You will, however, get the usual disclaimers. Before we begin, however, I'd like to give you some fair warning. This presentation is not the official word from the WFTDA or MRDA. I am a level 4 referee with WFTDA, but I am not working for them, and this has no official approval from them. I'm just a guy who wants to help out. And like anything that doesn't come with a WFTDA or MRDA seal of approval, take with an appropriate level of salt. In an effort to keep this presentation as correct as possible, I'm including the date that this presentation was recorded. In the event that I need to update the presentation due to something that was clarified or just out and out wrong, this date will change and there will be an update in the change log that's listed with the presentation on refed.com. The date of this recording is January 14, 2015. There were some visual updates to the diagrams on April 17, 2015. Let's start with the basics. Jammer A completely laps Jammer B. Jammer A scores a Jammer lap point. Assuming she has already passed the other four opposing blockers, she scores five points. So far, nothing has changed. Now, let's put Jammer A on a scoring pass, and Jammer B goes to the penalty box. Assuming Jammer A has passed all four opposing blockers while Jammer B is in the box, she gets the Jammer's point and scores five again. However, and this becomes really important as we go on, this is not a jammer lap point. This is a not on the track, or NOTT, point. Now, how jammer B leaves the penalty box is going to determine how or if a fifth point could be scored on jammer A's next scoring pass. Before this clarification, a lot of us went by the actual pass count to determine if there was a future lap point. If Jammer A and B were on their initial pass when Jammer B went to the penalty box, and Jammer A went on two additional passes while the other Jammer was in the box, we'd see that Jammer A was on pass number three, and Jammer B was still on her initial pass, and we continue to give not on the track points or lap points based on that. There was some more into that, but I won't go further into that scenario because it's no longer, or never did, depending on who you talk to, applies. The clarification says that once Jammer B exits the penalty box, she is, for all intents and purposes, on the same lap as Jammer A. On the score sheet, Jammer A is still on pass 3 and Jammer B is still on her initial pass, but once Jammer B exits the penalty box, she will not be scored on as a lap point until Jammer A passes her twice. Further, where Jammer B enters the track after exiting the penalty box determines if she's still a not on the track point or not. If Jammer B enters the track behind Jammer A and Jammer A scores upon an opposing blocker, Jammer B is scored on as a NOTT point. However, if Jammer B enters in front of Jammer A and is stuck in the pack and Jammer A physically passes her, this is not a lap point. She does not get scored upon she would have to go on another scoring pass and pass Jammer B again to get that lap point. So let's run through with the scenario from start to finish. The jam starts, 
and Jammer B is sent to the penalty box on her initial pass. Jammer A then exits the engagement zone and completes her initial pass. She goes on her first scoring pass and earns five points, one for each blocker and one NOTT point for Jammer B, who's still in the box. Coming into her second scoring pass, Jammer B exits the box, comes in behind Jammer A, and gets held up in the pack. Jammer A completes her second scoring pass and earns five points, four for each of her opposing blockers, and a knot on the track point for Jammer B. If you think of it this way, it's no different than if a blocker came out of the box behind the jammer on a scoring pass. Jammer A starts her third scoring pass, passing all four blockers and Jammer B. But in this case, she scores four points. She's only physically passed Jammer B once. So it's not a lap. There's no bonus point involved. As Jammer A goes into her fourth scoring pass, she passes all four blockers and Jammer B once again. But this time, she's passed Jammer B twice since she left the penalty box and therefore earns the Jammer lap point and five points in total. So far on this scenario, I've talked about Jammer B coming out of the box behind Jammer A. Let's run it again and this time have her come back into play in front of Jammer A. So the jam starts. Jammer B is sent to the penalty box on her initial pass. Jammer A then exits the engagement zone and completes her initial pass. She then goes on her first scoring pass and earns five points, one for each opposing blocker and one not on the track point for Jammer B. Coming into her second scoring pass, Jammer B exits the box and enters in front of Jammer A. Like before, Jammer B is stood up in the pack and Jammer A passes her and all four opposing blockers. She earns four points for the blockers, but none for the Jammer, who she has only passed for the first time since she came out of the penalty box. Now on Jammer A's third scoring pass, after passing all four opposing blockers and Jammer B, she gets five points, four for the blockers and a Jammer lap point. Assuming Jammer B does not go to the box again and is stuck on her same pass, every subsequent scoring pass by Jammer A is eligible for a Jammer lap point again. But if Jammer B does go to the box, she becomes, once again, a not on the track point. And when she re-enters the track, she comes back in on the same relative pass as Jammer A with regards to lap points. Are you confused yet? It can take some time to wrap your mind around it, especially if you're not used to calling it that way. Go over it again, and again if need be. I do have some suggestions on keeping things straight, and that involves communication between the JAMA referees and themselves, and the JAMA referees and inside pack refs. First, JAMA referees need to know when the opposing jammer is in the box. That means the other infield referees need to alert her when that other jammer commits a penalty. This way she knows to award an OTT points for the other jammer as well as any other blockers who are in the penalty box. Second, the jammer referee whose jammer is in the box should alert the other jam ref when their jammer has 10 seconds or less in the penalty box and is standing. I usually say, Jammer standing as the other jam ref skates past. This lets them know that soon we'll have to make a determination between a NOTT point or no point at all. Third, remember the practice of tapping your helmet for jammer lap points? Sometimes jammers whiz past and I'll frequently vocalize it in addition to the taps. But in this case, I vocalize that there's no lap point when that jammer first passes her opposing counterpart. Likewise, if the released jammer exits the penalty box in the engagement zone, but just behind that other jammer, let that other jammer ref know that she gets a NOTT point. As I said, inside pack refs can help on all of these too. 
since their pace is often slower than jam refs, they may have the perspective to help these scoring issues get resolved before it actually becomes an issue. But in all cases, be succinct. Jammer in the box. Jammer standing. Jammer not point. Not a lap, no point. This may seem overwhelming at first, but I found that as I've gotten used to it, like so many other things, you, well, start getting used to it. But this is a situation where communication is critical so we don't accidentally add a point that a team hasn't earned. I'd like to thank Duff Lensgren for permission to use his photographs in this presentation and Michael Hess for his suggestion of labeling the jammers in all the diagrams. I'd like to thank the Vienna Roller Derby for their permission to use their Ultimate Roller Derby Ubiquitous Magnet Board for this presentation. It can be found at viennarollerderby.org slash urdumb. If you found this presentation helpful, or think it or other presentations at refed.com might be helpful to others, please share this site. But please do not modify it or send it out without appropriate credit for its production. This presentation is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License.